Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about a little uh, exercise we're gonna be doing in the next couple of videos. So we've learned all these programming principles and now we're going to uh, kind of combine them to build a more complex application. That being said, the application isn't that complex, but just a, an exercise to help you get used to using for loops. Uh, okay, so what exactly is the exercise? Well, it's kind of annoying that um, in computer science and programming, we often get stupid exercises that deal with numbers and prime numbers and Fibonacci sequences and all that junk, when in reality, most of the stuff we do in our career and when we're actually building applications really has very little, little to do with math and um, other hard things like that. <laughs> that being said, some careers are going to be very math heavy, but it's annoying because there's not necessarily a correlation where all your exercises usually use math problems, but your actual job doesn't, which you just kind of got to deal with that. So to help you adapt to that, we're going to be doing some uh, exercises with prime numbers. Now it's going to be fun. I'm going to make it exciting. So don't freak out. <laughs> it's not like it's that hard. Prime numbers aren't that confusing. So a prime number is something that can't be divided into another whole number. So for example, if we have the number nine, well, this is actually just three times three. So it's not a prime number. Seven, on the other hand, if you go from seven down to zero and try to divide seven by that number, you're never going to get a whole number. For example, you could take seven divided by two and you get three and a half. There's nothing you can multiply to get seven if we're just multiplying whole, uh, whole numbers here. So like, for example, you could try three times two. Doesn't work, it gives you six. You could try three times four, uh, not quite, that gives you 12, so seven is a prime number. So hopefully you guys have a good understanding of what prime numbers are. Basically, we are given an assignment and I wrote down the, uh, the uh, requirements. Quote from your boss. We are in dire need to create a small application for our C powered calculator. And it will take a number from the user and output all prime numbers between zero and whatever number they input. At the end, it will say the total number of prime numbers. And the due date is today by lunchtime. P.S. You are a bad coder. <laughs> you know, because you never really know what kind of environment you're going to be working in. And that's a totally realistic possibility in computer science. So, <laughs> well, we're going to show them. So let's create the application. So basically what it's asking is, hey, you give it a number, say 25 and it's going to output all of the prime numbers from 25 down to zero and give the total number of prime numbers. So counting upward, that would be two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, uh, 17, 19, I'm, I'm probably screwing something up here. <laughs> um, 23, and yeah, that's it. So it would print out that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total prime numbers. And honestly, there is probably a very, very, very easy, simple way to do this, but we are going to do it a really complicated way of where we're literally just going to take this number and go downwards from that number and get all the prime numbers. Oh, and by the way, I just checked, and yes, these are all correct. Thank you very much for those of you who didn't trust my math skills. I got you there. Oh. So one thing we need to really be careful of when we're creating this application is something known as edge cases. And this really comes up with software testing. And software, building software is basically impossible in general. Therefore, we have to make a lot of tests and people actually devote their whole career just to software testing. And a big piece of this is testing what's known as edge cases. So the edge cases are like the highest and lowest number we're gonna be working with and a little bit past that. So for example, if we put in, you know, 25, you know, the, the edge cases in this scenario would be like two and one and zero and negative one. Like how, how are those things going to differ? And the reason this is, is because in this situation, it actually matters because one is not a prime number, nor is zero, just two. 
So we have to be careful in that situation to where we don't accidentally consider one a prime number and we can just do this by stopping at two if we're going down from 25. So this brings up, you know, maybe sometimes we have to clarify with our boss exactly what they're looking for. Do they consider one to be a prime number? Obviously, in this situation, I'm saying no, one's not a prime number, and I think that the general consensus is no, it's not a prime number. But there might be some uh, disagreement amongst some general, generally assumed knowledge. Um, so don't just assume if it's not 100% guaranteed. And maybe prime numbers isn't the best example of that, but if you generalize that concept to other possible programs you're going to be building, you will be much safer. So just something as simple as, you know, phone numbers. You might build an algorithm to work with phone numbers, but then you might just assume they're all gonna be US numbers or from a certain country. Well, that's not going to work. You have to talk about the edge cases of, hey, you might once in a year get a, a different format for a phone number um, for this application and, you know, really break things. <laughs> so I'm kind of getting off topic probably not that helpful. So let's just get back to what we were doing here. So we are going to write pseudocode. Pseudocode is basically code that has no rules on syntax. It just has somewhat code looking syntax. <laughs> basically it's a way for people to write code without actually having to worry about getting all the syntax and keywords correct. So we start with the, uh, the input. And in this situation, we're just going to assign it a value, but Obviously, eventually, we're going to want to get that from input. And our loop is going to get uh, look like this. So we have a for loop. We need to initialize. Well, we already initialized because this is the number we're starting with. So you don't actually have to do initialization. You can just put a little semicolon, which skips the initialization because that already happened up here. And now we're going to go down until the number is 1. So as long as input is greater than or equal to 2, we're going to keep going. Then we're going to, uh, how are we going to get there? We're going to decrement input 1 after every iteration of this loop. So we're going to say input minus minus. And then we have our curly braces. And because this is pseudocode, I don't actually have to write out the algorithm. I could just say figure out if prime and then if num is prime, print the number. To actually figure out if the number is prime, we're going to use another for loop and we're going to be getting into that in the upcoming videos. And also if you need to keep track of how many prime numbers there are from 25 down to two, then you will need another a variable to increment as we go. So for example, we could have an int, um, maybe like num prime. We could start that at zero. And then if the number is prime, we could say uh, num prime plus plus. Basically incrementing the, the count of prime numbers. And then when we're done, we can output that number's prime. And um, if we needed to, oh, it would also, it would print out all of the prime numbers, and then we could say the total number of prime numbers is num prime. So yeah, that's all I got for this video. This is just going to introduce you to the, uh, the challenge. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to start thinking about this and think about what algorithm we would need to do to figure out if a number is prime. And um, just think very simplistic about it. There are easier ways that you might learn in like discrete math. Um, but we're just, we're just thinking very simple here. So this is the iteration one of our uh, algorithm and we're not necessarily doing optimization. So it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so that's all I got for you guys in this video. Be sure to check out the next one because we're going to be expanding on this. So thank you.